center with his retirement money for giving solutions to the problems in post harvest technologies of paddy at tiruvarur in the heart of the rice growing region in tamil nadu in south india he was the project head of this laboratory from its inception in 1969 until his last days with this report of our former director now i invite dr kim venkat chalapati professor and head department of food engineering iifpt welcome the gathering ladies and gentlemen good morning to all of you today is a great day in the history of indian institute of food processing technology i am honored to give a welcome address to this august gathering yesterday january 31st was the anniversary of the our founder director dr v subramanian every year we remembered him by offering prayers and food to the children in the orphanage after dr c andramakrishnan became the director of the institute he invited the legends of science to inspire the young minds on this day with dr v s endowment lecture every year this year is very special because the living legend of indian science will give the endowment lecture dr r a mashalkar sir national research professor and former dg of csir and secretary dsir like all of you i am also eagerly waiting to listen to the national research professor on behalf of the ifpt family i extend a warm welcome to dr masekal sir for the last 5 years our director dr c anandram krishnan has no stern unturned for fulfilling dr v subramanian's vision to make this institute a world class institute is the inspiration for all the faculties staff and students of this institute by his leadership i welcome you sir for this milestone event of this institute i welcome all the faculties staff and students of ifpt for this wonderful program i hope today's speech will ignite your minds to excel further hope the blessings of dr v subramanian will always be with us to move forward also i wish to welcome all the distinguished guests watching this virtual program on desktops laptops and other digital devices from their home you will enjoy today's program and cherish this day for your life once again i welcome you all to this wonderful virtual event thank you thank you sir thank you sir. dear all iifpt is glad to share a short video of our founder director dr v subramanian in his honor vision of the great leader in food technology Dr Subramanian was born on 16th of September 1902 in Sirkari, Tanjore district of Andhra Madras presidency. In 1922, he graduated from St Joseph's College, Trichy with first rank in chemistry. He joined the Department of Biochemistry at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore for masters in biochemistry. In 1927, He graduated with Doctor of Science from the University of London. After his return to India, he was appointed as a lecturer in the Department of Biochemistry (IISC). In 1929, he was appointed as the Professor and Head, Department of Biochemistry (IISC). In 1948, Dr. Supramanian was appointed as the planning officer for the CSIR, CFTRI, and became the first director of CFTRI. In 1969, he started a research and development laboratory in the modern rice mill complex of Tanjore Cooperative Marketing Federation at Tiruvarur. The mandate of the laboratory was to seek solutions for preserving high moisture paddy. In 1972, 
it was upgraded as a national laboratory with the name Paddy Processing Research Center. It focused on research on post-harvest processing and preservation of paddy. Further, the institute was moved to Tanjavur and shaped into today's IIFPT through his great vision. Dr. Supramanian was the recipient of many awards mainly, Research Medal of the Royal Agricultural Society, Padmashri, Rafi Ahmad Kitwa-e Award, Babcock Heart Award of the Institute of Food Technologists, First Frieshland Award, I few to name. Moreover, he was affiliated to several societies with designations including, Founder President of AFSTI, Fellow of Royal Institute of Chemistry, President of Society of Biological Chemists. Fellow of National Institute of Sciences of India. His major scientific contributions were, development of Amul Bhutt food, development of new methods for producing parboiled rice, preservation of coconut copra. He had also authored over 600 research papers in international and national journals and hold 30 patents. Words of our visionary founder director. I have done what little I can to safeguard the interest of the center and those who have been working with us. My task is nearly over. Barring anything unforeseen. I may leave sometime during 1979. The vision of our founder stands true with drastic reformation and transformation of PTRC as IAFPT which is recognized as a world-renowned research institute for science, especially food science. May I now welcome our respected director, Dr. C. Anantaramakrishnan sir, the designer of milestones of IAFPT between 2016 to till date to brief about Dr. V. Subramanian endowment lecture. Sir, please. Most respected R.A. Masilka sir, the, all the dignitaries who are watching the today live program of this event, Dr. Vengdajalabadi, all my colleagues, students, press and media personals. Really, it is indeed a honor to welcome today's event, Professor R.A. Masilka sir. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation. It is a big dream for me as well as IFPT to listen and enlighten from your talk, sir. Dr. V. Subramaniam is the visionary leader, scholar, institutional builder. If you look at two institutions Dr. V. Subramaniam has built for our country, one is at CSAR, CFTRI. When the palace has given to Dr. V. Subramaniam sir to convert as the wonderful research laboratory. Today, the, what CFTRI is contributing to the country throughout the globe, all the food science and technology fraternity, that all the things what he has put the hard work when he started journey from the CSAR CFTRI. After his attainment, he moved to Punjabur. He has not taken the rest till his last date. And he, still his last date, he served for this institute. All his money, whatever he earned from IIC Bangalore and CSAR CFTRA, full money he has spent for building this institute to cater the needs of the farmers of this area, especially paddy growing farmers. That time, a lot of problems they faced the wet paddy cultivations. And he has helped a lot. What he has done for the CSAR CFTRA, when country needs more milk powder, nutrition problem is arrived that time. Challenge has thrown in front of CSAR, CFTRA. He developed Amul spray from the buffalo milk. Till that point of time, everybody was thinking high amount of the fat content buffalo milk can't be converted as the milk powder. And the team of scientists led by Dr. V. Subramaniam has done it. Till date, it serves what is the purpose supposed to serve for CFTRI and the IFPT as well. Now the two national institutes helping the national building and especially forming community as well as the nutritional security of this country. Whatever he has put the seed 50 years back today, 
we are getting the fruits we don't know what his imagination of future of pprc let ifpt but today we are witnessing ifpt is a small institution with the only 30 faculties and we reached first time in nir of ranking 74th among all the in engineering colleges that is not the simple achievement it is a tremendous achievement by the all the faculty and students of this institute and also what we initiated the onion mission program we wanted to take that institute into the field we put our incubation center at where the heart of the cultivation of the onion growing farmers we construct the building as well as establish the incubation facilities farmers can bring the raw material they can process they can take it that is the model now our ministry of food processing industry has wanted to elaborate throughout the country now ifpt is play the vital role to implement such type of incubation center throughout the country under pmfm scheme and ifpt is taken the lead to for capacity building of training the all the master trainers and all so such all the things has happened from the 50 years back what he dreamed it not only that we got fiki award for onion mission program and also we got vishwakarma award from as ast for the mainly for developed nation developed village and also we got arya award so many recognition we got it now because of the hard work and what we delivered and not only that and very soon and maybe this parliament session itself our institute may be going to be a institute of national importance status with the blessings of dr v subramaniam sir already that bill has been cleared by the cabinet and most probably within a this week or coming week this bill will be going to introduce and rajya sabha let and followed by the lok sabha that is the dream maybe he has dreamed earlier and we wanted to fulfill his dream and we are putting all the effort what the institute supposed to serve for this nation and giving the endowment lecture on his death anniversary and our dr ari mashilka sir is giving the lecture is really is a wonderful to listen and inviting him sir really sir when i joined 99 as a scientist at csr cftri you are the director general of csr cftri sir you visited the cftri 2000 for the cftri golden jubilee celebration still i remember the word what each and every word in my mind sir two things i have taken from that talk what you gave sir one is that you said you wanted a lakshmi you always need a saraswati not only for the personal life sir institution as well the same thing i followed my life as well as ifpt as well and ifpt sir i proudly say when 2015 whatever we earned we increased our earning four times sir now all from the technology transfers consultancy services sir that is a possible because we want strong technology development and more outreach program and sort of the technology and the patenting you brought the patent culture in csr cftr as well as all the csr lab convert the csr into one team csr sir the same model most of the institution now adopting and we learned everything from the art what you are done it in the csr sir and second one you said maybe the simple one but the young scientists like me that time it was a big thing for me how to do the day to day life you said simple solution for that go to the morning to the mirror plan what you are going to do that day still last 20 years i followed your advice sir and wherever you are talk it's motivates and every time you are serving for this country even this age sir just know the video played at set our founder director has set the last day he said i will leave sometime soon in 79 within a week time he left us till last date he served as the director and serve for this country same manner sir you are also doing whatever the best possible manner to make science based country sir we wanted to do that whatever the guidelines whatever the guidance you are giving we wanted to follow from all the institution throughout the country we are doing sir and hope today your lecture will make us more proud and today we are witnessing what is the science of our country is doing and either vaccines whatever the immediate response from our scientific community everything you cultivated that culture sir and we are proud that csr has done a wonderful job apart from that dsp gpt all the scientific organization in the country stood together 
to fought for this covid sir we are going to see that what is the futuristic idea and how we wanted to do it in the future of our country sir and we yeah, hope to listen your wonderful talk today sir once again thank you so much for coming to this live stream and today so many people are watching this live stream i think that is the message we wanted to take it for the future thank you so much for accepting our invitation to blessing this day sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir today we are honored to have you as a chief guest sir may i now request the director to present the awards and the august presence of our chief guest professor dr r a mashilkar sir dr v subramanian best scientist award for 2021 to dr r mahendra associate professor and head center of excellence in non thermal processing Dr. V. Subramanian Best Technical Staff Award 2021 goes to Dr. R. Parantaman, Technical Officer, Computational Modeling and Nano Scale Processing Unit. Dr. V. Subramanian, Best Supporting Staff Admin for 2021, to Mrs. J. Jayalakshmi, Senior Secretary at Assistant from Stenographer. Congratulations to all award winners. Thank you, sir. IAFPT is highly honored and adorned with the august presence of the great scientist and national research professor, Dr. R. A. Mashilkar sir, to grace this occasion. Professor R. A. Mashilkar sir doesn't need. an introduction as he is well renowned as a scientist as well as administrator to everyone of us still for the sake of youngsters before going to the endowment lecture we would like to present a short video to know more about the laurels and achievements of our eminent chief the flight of imagination has no limit except the one that you put on your own mind Dr Raghunath Mashelkar was born on 1st of January 1943 in a small village in the present state Goa After losing his father at the age of 6 he moved to Mumbai along with his mother for education and livelihood He completed his primary education in Khetwadi Municipal School and Union School Mumbai and higher secondary education from Jai Hind College Mumbai Dr Mashelkar joined UGCT presently ICT Mumbai for bachelor's in chemical engineering he decided to stay in India to pursue his doctorate despite receiving several overseas opportunities excellence in doctoral research lead to the Leverhulme fellowship which opened new horizons in research in the field of rheology Dr Mashelkar was appointed as lecturer in the Department of Chemical Engineering at University of Salford UK In 1975 Dr Mashelkar came back to India and joined CSIR and CL Pune In 1989 he became the director of CSIR and CL He became the director general of CSIR in 1995 and strived to unify the efforts of 40 diverse laboratories into establishing a one team culture and improved internal collaboration. Dr. Marshall Kerr was the longest serving director general of CSIR from 1995 to 2006. Dr. Marshall Kerr challenged the US patent on the use of turmeric for wound healing. 
he fought a 14-month long legal battle to revoke the patent and stood victorious. Some notable awards include Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Prize in 1982 which recognizes scientists below the age of 45. India's fourth highest civilian honor Padma Shri in 1991. Dr. Mashelkar is the first and only scientist to receive AIMA, JRB Tata Corporate Leadership Award in 1998. Dr. Mashelkar is the third Indian engineer to be inducted as the Fellow of the Royal Society. India's third highest civilian honor Padma Bhushan in year 2000. Business Week Star of Asia in 2005. This award is given to eminent Asians who have been path breakers in their fields. India's second highest civilian honor Padma Vibhushan in 2014. TWAS Lenovo Science Prize in 2018 which is considered as mini Nobel Prize for developing world scientists. Dr. Mashelkar has 44 honorary doctorates, he has published 284 research papers and 25 books, and chair 12 highly empowered Mashelkar committees. Dr. Mashelkar's contributions to India's science, technology and innovation standard matched. IIFPT proudly presents Dr. V. Supramanian Endowment Lecture Award 2021 to Dr. R. A. Marshalkar. After watching the video, we realize the harvest of science for their scientists is always with laurels and recognitions, wherever they go in the globe. Which is very true with our distinguished, honorable, I renowned scientist, Dr. R. A. Mashilka, sir. Sir, you are, and you will be a great inspiration to all of us. So, now is the time to hear the inspiring speech from the great personality. On behalf of director, staff, and students of IAFPT, I now kindly invite our chief guest, the renowned scientist, Sir, Dr. R. A. Mashilka, sir, the former director general, CSIR, and secretary, DSIR. Deliver Dr. V. Subramanian Endowment Lecture on the topic Reimagining and Reinventing Post COVID India. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for those very warm words, very warm welcome. You know, we talk about new normals today. This is a new normal. Uh, but, you know, I wish we come back to the old normal. What was the old normal? Dr. Prakash is somewhere in the audience. He knows that uh, when we meet, we don't uh, just shake hand. We have a warm hug. I wish I was there with you all, following that old normal, meeting you all of, uh, um, 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 all, uh, uh, of uh, you as uh, uh, distinguished members of the scientific fraternity of IF. PT, uh, I'm sorry that I can't be there uh, sort of uh, physically, uh, but I'm very happy to connect with you uh, digitally. Uh, Dr. Anand Ramakrishnan, your most kind words. I'm, I'm really uh, uh, touched by what you uh, said. Uh, yes, I, uh, CFTRI was one of my favorite laboratories, by the way. I visited it a uh, uh, number of times. Uh, the accolades and what you have done for the country from CFTRI, uh, including what you referred to as uh, uh, Amul, uh, the uh, buffalo milk uh, uh, based uh, product that we created uh, for uh, uh, India uh, was phenomenal. And there have been uh, so many other uh, amazing accomplishments. And uh, I'm very happy and proud to see what started as a small uh, research uh, uh, rice research center uh, the way uh, indian uh, institute of food uh, processing technology has uh, grown and will soon become uh, uh, the uh, pride of india in terms of uh, uh, an institute of uh, national uh, uh, eminence and national importance uh, to me you are already uh, 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 an institute of uh, national importance. 
you know, I think the government will just formally certify it. That's all. Because I watched your amazing work that you have done over a period of time. And uh, I, uh, you know, your past has been glorious. And I'm quite sure that your future will be even more glorious. I'm also grateful to you that you gave me an opportunity to pay my tributes uh, to uh, revered uh, uh, Dr. V. Subramanian. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, incredible. Uh, the only job I have done in my life is CSR. I did nothing else in my life, really. And therefore, CSR is at my heart. And I always say, once a CSR, always a CSR. And uh, if you see the way CSR was built uh, by these great uh, personalities, it is incredible. I mean, <laughs> just can you imagine Visurundam going to the uh, Maharaja of Mysore and um, getting this uh, particular palace and converting this palace magically in just 22 months uh, into a lab? And you know, we talk about multiple of crores. Uh, that day, I understand, 1949-50, uh, his capital budget was three lakhs, and uh, recovery with mean, the uh, operational budget was 1.2 lakhs. Can you can you just imagine? He started with six, seven uh, uh, sort of scientists and created such a magnificent uh, uh, laboratory. Uh, you talked about one of uh, the great features of his. Uh, uh, life, which is uh, that he kept on working till the last day of his uh, 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 life. In fact, uh, you know, uh, I have these five Mashalkar mantras that I always give to young students. And uh, all of them want uh, instant success, like instant coffee. And I tell them there is nothing like instant success, like instant coffee. There is no substitute to hard work. And I always tell them, that all my life I've worked hard. I worked 24 into 7, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and I shall continue to do so till I breathe my last. And that's exactly what uh, 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 weird uh, Dr. V. Subramanian did. In fact, I was having an interaction with uh, uh, some young people on the other day. I, I meet them very often because that makes me also feel uh, young, you know, there is a selfish interest. So one of them said, and in fact, uh, post-COVID, I've been working twice as hard as I was pre-COVID, because it's now all zooming in and zooming out. And it's absolutely incredible the way the life has gone. So they said, uh, look, uh, uh, you achieved so much uh, in your life, and you are working twice as hard now. Why? So I gave them a response, which I thought I will repeat, because some of the people of my age who might be there in the audience <laughs> might take some uh, inspiration from that. I said, look, today I'm 78. So when I was 28, I would say there are 50 years to go. But now I'm 78, I don't even know whether I have five years to go. So what I achieved in 50 years, I have to achieve in five years. So when you become old, you work harder, 10 times harder, basically. You know, And that, I think, is the important uh, sort of message for nation building, devoting every ounce that you have giving back to the society till the end. That's what uh, 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 Dr. Subramaniam did. And I think that's, uh, that's a great lesson for us. So I feel really privileged to pay my homage, my respects uh, to this uh, builder of not only CFTRI, not only IFPT, but I would say a nation builder. I would put him in a, in a much uh, higher orbit. I am not a sort of a food uh, technology, sort of food scientist. So I'm not uh, going to talk about food at all. I like to talk about subject that I uh, sort of understand. But uh, you know, the, my friend Prakash has this great persuasive uh, power. So uh, two, three years ago, he came to me and he said, you must give the keynote in the IFOST, uh, this International Union for Food Science and Technology. Okay. And I remember uh, that lecture, and that is available. And Dr. Uh, Anand Ramakrishnan, I will send that lecture to you. And uh, that lecture had a dream uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a theme. And it was 25 billion meals a day by 2025, healthy, nutritious, safe, and divorced. And I had shown the way on how one can achieve it. And I had given two mantras of mine. One was 
more from uh, less for more. How do you do that? And also, there's an assured framework. Uh, if we follow that, like affordable, scalable, sustainable, user friendly, uh, rapid, uh, excellent in terms of technology and distinctive. And I've shown how the current technologies uh, sort of fall and said that if you use these two mantras, you can achieve this particular dream. I'll be happy to share it with you, and you might uh, uh, sort of share it uh, uh, with others. Uh, I am quite uh, uh, able to see, you know, I always uh, think in terms of uh, not incremental, but disruptive, game changing innovation in uh, sort of uh, technology. So I'm a 10x guy. 10x means 10 times better and 10 times cheaper. And I'm very happy to say what I like to call as affordable excellence. India is fantastic in creating affordable excellence. You know, very high quality products at very sort of low cost. But for doing what looks like impossible, you also have to change uh, uh, the way you do things. For example, I'll uh, uh, pull out this book from my library. Uh, this is called Leapfrogging to Pole Vaulting. This book won the business book of the year last year and uh, has inspired many, including our uh, um, uh, chief of staff. Uh, you know, uh, he, he said on the other day that nation should follow this leap. What was the idea there? Why does the frog leap? The frog leaps because he's afraid of his predator. Okay, and jumps a few feet. And what we are seeing in this book is that no, don't do that. Just don't jump in a uh, sort of uh, to protect yourself a few feet, but pole vault. The size of the pole determines the size of your aspiration. Okay. And we demonstrate as to how uh, India has uh, done it in uh, many, many ways uh, uh, indeed. And then I talked about not just the best practice, the next practice. Because if you are following somebody's uh, the best practice, then you become a follower. How do you create the next practice? Because the world is changing very really rapidly. See, to my limited understanding, if you see even in food uh, technology, and these will be my last remarks on food that I dare to speak <laughs> in front of all the uh, eminent experts here, I can quite clearly see that current best practice will move to the next practice. Like, for example, uh, the current uh, practice is uh, traditional offline platforms that we use. The future is, of course, the digital platforms. The current best practice is, of course, rural agriculture, but urban agriculture will uh, sort of uh, creep up. Today, we look at food as a product. Food is going to be a service. Today, the farming is done in traditional way. It will be done. Maybe vertical farming will come up and a whole range of uh, 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 other things, you know, indoor farms and so on and so forth. Uh, today, uh, we have lifestyle-based dialect, but uh, tomorrow, there may be DNA-based uh, uh, sort of uh, diets. Uh, today, we are looking at slaughterhouse meat, uh, which creates such a huge carbon uh, footprint, as you know. We may go for lab grown meat, synthetic uh, foods are not far, far away. What I am saying, uh, 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 wish to say, is that we should be always ahead of the curve rather than follow. My dream is always that India must lead and not uh, uh, just follow. So I'm quite sure whether it is IFPT or uh, uh, the CFTRI, my entire CSR, uh, we have to be able to do that. I'm very proud that uh, when Jan Narika's book, Scientific Age, uh, listed the top 10 achievements of Indian science and technology. I remember the first uh, was uh, Ramanujan, of course, and then Meghna Saha for the stellar astrophysics, uh, and SM Bose, as you know, we talk about boson particle and so on. Then Sir Sivi Raman for the Nobel Prize and so on and so forth. And among the 10, there was one which was CSR transformation that took place in 90s. Okay. And I'm uh, very happy, uh, Dr. Anand Ramakrishnan, that uh, uh, you were 90, you talk about 1999 when you were at CFTRI. You are a part of this great uh, transformation uh, that we uh, did. And I'm very proud to see the way CSR has uh, reacted. We have a fantastic director general, Shekhar Mande, by the way. 
extraordinarily inspiring, a really people's director general. And can you just imagine the way CSR reacted uh, uh, to COVID, creating almost 100 technologies in uh, 100 days? It is absolutely um, uh, sort of a phenomenal contribution by CSR. So CSR always rises to the occasion, and I've been very proud of uh, uh, having been uh, sort of a, a, a part of it. I would uh, go back to my main theme uh, of uh, the talk, and that is uh, that we have had uh, uh, COVID, and uh, this has been an unprecedented, uh, I would say. You know, we talk about who covered volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, right? I don't think there was a greater hookah year than 2020. The way the sort of uh, thing changed overnight. Overnight, you saw within 100 days, 100 million families moved from poverty to extreme poverty. What it meant was that so many years of work just went down the drain in uh, 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 just 100 days. If you saw 1.6 billion children, just went out of school and online learning became now one third of them don't have access uh, to uh, uh, either the iPad or smartphone uh, or laptop or what have you. So that means no access to education. So can you imagine 1.6 billion children being deprived of education? It's amazing. Lives were lost, livelihoods were lost. You know, work from home became uh, sort of a, a, a new uh, a normal work. Uh, home became uh, the school, the office, the theater, uh, everything. And of course, uh, when you are in such a situation, uh, you have to also uh, say, what do I do now? And therefore, we are restarting, we are rebuilding, we are recovering. We don't want to recover to the same old state, as a matter of fact. I think this is a chance for us to rethink and reimagine the new India uh, that uh, uh, we will uh, create. We have to also see what, uh, 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 you know, what are the lessons from this uh, pandemic. Because if you see the pandemic, you know, I think it provides a trailer for what will happen if a full-fledged climate crisis would entail. Because what would happen if a full-fledged climate crisis is there? There will be huge disruptions on the demand side, which took place now. There will be huge disruptions on the supply side, which took place now. And there will be huge speeds of global transmission, global amplification, which took place now. Uh, can you just imagine the uh, new virus strain in Britain, for example, within no time it has been there in 17 countries. Can you just uh, sort of um, imagine uh, this globally connected world, how it uh, sort of basically changes. So I think we have to reimagine, reinvent a new world and a new India. And our most inspiring prime minister, of course, has given us the mantra, Atma Nirbhar Bharat. And he has given it for a good reason, as I will explain shortly. But I would say that Atma Nirbhar Bharat, self-reliant India, does not mean that we have to uh, protect ourselves with huge tariff barriers like we did several years ago, not in isolation, but we have to integrate with the global supply chain. All right. And therefore, we have to look at Atma Nirbhar Bharat with Atma Vishwas and Atma Sanman. What does that mean? Self reliant India with self confidence that we can do it and also self respect self-dignity. Right. So this is an opportunity to rethink and reimagine India. The other thing is uh, we always talk in terms of buy or make, all right? But reinventing India, we'll have to think in terms of five pillars. You know what are those five pillars? One is buy, second is make, third is buy to make better, fourth is make to buy better, and fifth is make it together. I'll explain to you because we are otherwise thinking just of, uh, see, what does buy mean? That means uh, uh, you go and beg and borrow technology 
and you are dollars and you buy. And uh, I can assure you that uh, even if you are dollars, people will not use it. I remember I was uh, the uh, on the board of directors of IPCL. We wanted alpha olefin technology. Why alpha olefin? Because alpha olefin sulfonates were biodegradable detergents. Okay. So we went to Idemitsu in Japan, Shell in Europe, you know, Chevron uh, in US. Nobody gave us the technology. Why? They didn't want India to be a bottomless uh, um, 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 uh, demand, of course, we have, but a competitor. So even when you want technology, they will not uh, actually uh, uh, give you. So, for example, 5G. I'm very happy that uh, we are developing our own technology. We heard uh, the announcement uh, by Mr. Mukesh Ambani on that. So that is buying part of it. Secondly, make. Of course, we have been uh, making. But make in India cannot be assembled in India. It has to be invented in India. Why? Otherwise, you'll be wiped out. Let me give you an example. We are making mobiles in India. In 2015, I mean, there were companies like Micromax and Carbon and so on. You know how much was our share? 45%. Okay, and today, you know what it is? From 45% to 9%. Why? What happened? Who ate away our land? Chinese. Chinese came in 2015, when they were 45%, they were just 7%. Today, from 7%, they are 68%. All right, and how much are we? Just 9%. So we have gone down and they have gone up. Why? Because uh, we were just assembling. If you make make in India just as an assembly in India, it will not work. You have to invent. And they created new uh, models, uh, making them more user friendly, getting the advanced technologies, and so on and so forth. So there is no substitute to research and innovation. When we talk about make in India, it is invent in India. That is the new India that we have to see. The third is buying to make better. You know, for example, uh, transistor. Uh, we always talk about Sony, but Sony was uh, the transistor was uh, the American technology. They were the American patents that Sony bought, and they made so so much uh, uh, better that they became uh, the uh, uh, number one. Okay, so it is not just buying technology; it is buying components. I was hearing Rahul Bajaj on the other day. And he exports 15,000 crore worth uh, uh, two wheelers. But he says, I import uh, some components from China, uh, you know, uh, some uh, uh, 600 plus 400 crore with his vendors, which is about 1,000 crore. So his 15,000 crore export depends upon 1,000 crore uh, uh, sort of import. But he takes them and then creates a better way. So, what are the three things I have talked to you so far? Buying, making, and buying to make better. But there is something called making to buy better. Okay. And in that making to buy better, what we do is that we develop technological com competence so that the others are forced to give the technology to us. Like Alpha Olefin, you know, I said um, that they did not give us the technology. But I remember I was IPCL director and we were doing work on Alpha Olefin and we had got a breakthrough in Catalyst. We are going for a pilot plant and some finance guys stopped us uh, for some reason. And then somebody who was traveling with me told me that, look, uh, the, uh, it was a person from Chevron. He said, we are watching you very closely. If you had gone up to pilot plan, we knew you will go forward and then you will become competitor. And then you would have given the technology so that you don't have your own technology. Can you, can you just imagine that? So that is the fourth thing we have to do. And the last one is making it together, like all of us do. You know, CFTRI partner, IFP partner. All our uh, about is partnering as a as a, as a team India spirit. So I think the first point I want to make is that we have to uh, ensure that uh, all these five mantras are uh, actually followed. The other point I want to sort of talk about is the confidence that I have. You know, people call me a dangerous optimist, but why I'm dangerously optimistic? When uh, our uh, um, COVID pandemic came. We are completely unprepared. There was no diagnostic, there was no vaccine, there were no drugs, uh, there were no uh, uh, personal protection equipment, these, that, and that we are dependent upon China's of this world, and so on and so forth. 
But just see what a transformation we have made. If you looked at the Indian challenges, what were the Indian challenges? Let me take you through because this is very inspiring. That's why I'm very proud of Indian science. You know, the first challenge was that we had limited availability of quality test kits. In fact, the state-run labs, when it came, they were running at 36% capacity and the private labs were doing some eight tests a day. And in fact, uh, they were uh, headlined because then we had to look for outside. No? And then there was a queue. And in Bloomberg, I found a headline which said, India finds itself at the back of the line for virus test kits. Because we are in the queue, but we are there. From there, what we did was phenomenal. Here in Pune, there is uh, this MyLab, a startup. And I will tell you, the startups have been a tremendous source of talent and technology. Within six weeks, they created the uh, new RT-PCR. And within three months, they tested 1.2 uh, sort of million. And it was three times cheaper than the imported one. And 95% components were indigenous. So therefore, when our prime minister says, Atmanirbhar Bharat, we should not depend upon the others. This was a classical case. And then we have seen uh, the new breakthroughs uh, that have uh, actually come up. What was the second challenge? Second challenge was that uh, we had these uh, uh, high-rise, uh, uh, I mean, high-risk individuals we had to sort of basically identify. And Dharavi, if you remember, uh, it had the Asia's biggest slum, uh, you know, and their social distancing was absolutely impossible. And people had said that it is a ticking bomb, it will work. But in Los Angeles times, there was uh, uh, the uh, sort of a, a headline, you know what was that? While coronavirus spread in US, an Indian slum with 1 million residents contained it. Can we learn something from them? Can you just imagine that? OK. Now, how was that possible? Because they had this uh, uh, testing, tracing, and isolation done, and rapid testing. And again, startups came up. For example, uh, CureDeck AI, you know, it could detect uh, COVID-19 within less than one minute just for a couple of dollars. So mass screening was done, isolation was done. And it was incredible. It's a matter of pride. You know, I'm sure the Harvard Business Review will write a case study on something like how such a miracle could take place. Similarly, there is a, there were limited ICU beds, basically. And today, you can see the suffering, by the way. I will read out something to you. Uh, and I want you to guess as to which country it must have been, this headline. It says, the situation here is dire. Every minute, 10 people test positive for COVID-19. Every minute. Every eight minutes, someone dies. Every eight minutes. Ambulances circle for hours, unable to find ERs that can accept patients. Hospitals are running out of oxygen. ICU capacity is at zero. Patients lie in hallways and tents. Emergency room nurses have more patients than they can handle, sometimes six at a time. Have a guess. All of you must be thinking what country it must be in, or what uh, uh, you must be thinking, oh, it must be some remote village in Africa or India or some developing world. I'm sorry. This is Los Angeles. This is California. A region which has a $68,000 GDP per capita. Ours is 2000, no? 34 times future. Why did that happen? It happened because of lack of scientific temper. Virus doesn't walk to you. You have, you are, you can use mask. You keep distance of two meters. You wash your hands. What's so big in it? This is what science said, but they refuse to uh, sort of do that. And what are the consequences? You can quite clearly see. But the important part I want to uh, sort of uh, uh, say, I mean, the reason I'm saying is that how much better we have done. People just, uh, you know, we are so self-critical. We just don't understand how well we are done. So when they say ICU capacity is at zero, here is an Indian creating ICU capacity. You know, in my mother's name, I have created Anjani Mashelkar Inclusive Innovation Awards. Inclusive Innovation. And they are all given for people who make high technology work for the poor. Okay, because making high technology work for the rich, very easy. Making low technology work for the poor, very easy. But making high technology work for the poor is very difficult. So they create such uh, uh, technologies. 
Okay, I'll give you uh, just uh, 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 one instance because you might wonder what it is. And as I said, I don't believe in best practice. I believe in next practice. So here is a next practice one. You know, uh, this was uh, in the 10 years of journey, we have given a number of awards, 13 awards. And one of them was Rahul Rastogi. What did he do? And I'm mentioning this to you specifically because this has to be the characteristics of Indian innovation, innovation, as I call it. So he, Rahul Rastogi, his father uh, used to have some heart issues. So he had to be taken for ECG, he would lie down in the bed. I mean, if they're there, then, then those 12 leads are put, as you know, there is a nurse who takes a reading, half an hour goes, then you get a paper readout. He's an electronic reserve. He said, why should I, can I not uh, create I, um, uh, uh, this thing, ECG machine, which I can keep in my pocket? And he created one. This is the machine. What, how does it operate? You know, you have this, you put your two thumbs for uh, just uh, uh, 15 seconds. Then there is a sensor, as you can see. This is your heart. You put it here, 15 seconds, 15 seconds, 15 seconds. And below the heart, 15 seconds, 15 seconds, 15 seconds. So within three minutes, if you are downloading an app called Sanket, like I have, the uh, ECG uh, goes, uh, uh, you know, uh, via uh, that digital transmission. So imagine what it means that in a village when an old woman has a pain and she has to be put in a bullet cart or a scooter or a jeep and taken several kilometers, you don't have to do that. It's like using an advanced thermometer and you can get it. And this is you are certified and it's, it's amazing. So user friendly and so on. So that's an Indian innovation, a portable city. And you can buy it, uh, uh, by the way, this Sanket Life. It is available for just 2,500 rupees, but the cost per ECG turns out to be just 5 rupees, not 500 rupees. That's why I talk about affordable excellence as the key for Indian innovation. Because normally we say, oh, if it is affordable, it can't be excellent. If it is excellent, it can't be affordable. India does the trick. 10 times better, but 10 times cheaper, like this particular device. So when you talk about ICU, one of this, uh, this year's award went to uh, one innovation called Dozi. Well, what they have done is that if you have a bed, you know, he uses Internet of Things, IoT, and where with the sensor-based system, you just slip it under uh, the sink, and seven of your vital parameters are uh, sort of measured. And if you uh, put that probe um, on oxygen, uh, even oxygen is monitored and all done remotely. At what cost? 5% of the cost of water. And what accuracy? 98.4% medical accuracy of those vital parameter. Now you can quite clearly see what it means. So any bed, as a matter of fact, within less than five minutes can be converted into a stand-up uh, sort of ICU. US should be looking at things like what this Anjani Marshalker Inclusive Innovation Award, because they are saying ICU capacity as zero. I mean, you can convert your bed at home in, in, in uh, sort of an ICU. This is the power of Indian innovation. What was the other challenge that we had? You look at, uh, for example, our conditions. Look at uh, uh, the ventilators. I'm saying all this because you must feel proud about the way Indian science uh, rose. You look at uh, ventilators. We are all importing them, basically. And what are the conditions in villages? Uh, no compressed uh, medical air, either no power or frequent power cuts. Uh, limited trained staff, etc. Now, this is where the private sector comes in. You know, Marico Innovation Foundation, I've been its chairman for the last uh, 17 years from 2003, 18 now. And uh, they came out with a grand uh, the, uh, challenge prize of 2.5 crore. And I chaired that committee to select. And it's amazing, this Nokka, uh, Shriyas and KPIT, they came out with ventilators which are fraction of the cost, 10% of the cost of those ventilators, all right, of a high quality, which can work even when there is no compressed medical air, frequent power cuts, and limited train stop. And now suddenly uh, they are getting orders uh, abroad. As our honorable prime minister says, make in India, but for the world. And what will take it? Affordable, it will help our uh, uh, poor, but excellence, if it matches the world quality, Word will be, and there's a demand now. Why I'm uh, giving this to you, you know, like personal protection equipment, PPEs, 
we are importing them as a matter of fact uh, mostly from china and within two months of pandemic we uh, created uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, PPEs. We were actually uh, in 60 days, I would say. There's a headline which says in 60 days our PP production goes 56x. And we have created a $1 billion industry now. And we actually exported 2.3 million uh, in the month of uh, July. So an importing country becoming uh, sort of uh, exporting. It's the same thing with vaccines, as you see. I sit in Pune. And everybody is looking at Serum Institute for providing uh, this thing. And there is what is called as a vaccine diplomacy. India is giving vaccines uh, to the uh, uh, whole world. And uh, of course, Serum is producing the uh, Oxford AstraZeneca, but uh, we have uh, uh, Bharat Biotech, uh, our own uh, uh, sort of vaccine uh, also uh, uh, coming up. I think the point I want to make is that India is always tested during adversity. And how that adversity was converted into an opportunity, I think is a story that will be remembered for a long time. And I'm very happy that uh, uh, India has actually demonstrated uh, to the rest of the world uh, in terms of what uh, we can do. We have the talent, we have the technology, all that we need to have uh, is, the, uh, is the trust, I would say. Uh, there are two, three other points uh, that uh, I want to make uh, uh, before I uh, close. See, one of the issues that bothers me uh, is uh, our very heavy dependence on uh, China, by the way. Because uh, what's uh, happening is that I will give you some figures. And that is where uh, Prime Minister's Aftunibar Bharat becomes very critical. Now, if you look at the Chinese dependence in pharma, you know, if you, I mean, people look at us like a pharmacy of the world, right? We supply the cheapest and the highest quality uh, generic drugs to the rest of the world, basically. But we are very dependent upon China. If you look at APIs, which are active pharmaceutical ingredients, which are used in making these, 70% of them come from China. So if China stops it tomorrow, what happens? China raises the prices, what happens? And therefore, this Atmanibar Bharat, and that's why uh, the government has come out with a great scheme to make us kind of uh, independent. Now, I can understand that happening in uh, API, but in electronics, 45%. Uh, manufactured capital goods, 32%. Uh, uh, in furniture, 53%. Why? What's so great about it? All right. So some or the other, uh, the, you know, when I say reinvent new India, reimagine and reinvent new India, I think these are the ground realities that uh, we have to take into uh, account and very rapidly uh, move towards a real uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat. Uh, there is another uh, uh, issue that I want to flag before you in terms of how we need to move on uh, uh, technology. And why, uh, uh, in fact, uh, I've just commented on the science technology innovation policy, a wonderful policy that uh, the draft is circulating at the moment. And I had almost a 90 minute discussion uh, with the team who has drafted it uh, yesterday. And one of the important points I want to make is the following. And that is, uh, we have uh, the uh, challenge of moving from ideas to impact, from mind to marketplace. And there are several factors for which we need to build national innovation ecosystem. I told you about the children not having uh, the, the uh, uh, either the uh, digital gadgets or not having, uh, you know, connectivity, okay, and therefore being deprived of education. But if you just go back, you know, there was this computer which came out in 2001. It was a low-cost alternative to PC, shared device that permitted to be simple and uh, natural user uh, interface, you know. And most importantly, we always say that we follow the others. No, sorry, this was leading the others. 
What iPhone did later, it had done earlier, what is called as an accelerometer, you know. What Samsung Galaxy did later, that is bungle on mail, you know, the ability to write on phone, they had done it. So in 2001, here was something which was ahead of iPhone, which was ahead of Samsung, okay. And in fact, the Bruce Sterling of New York Times, I'm very proud to tell you, had said that the most significant innovation in computer technology was not Apple's gleaming uh, PowerBook uh, 4G, nor was it Microsoft Windows XP. It was Simputer, a Netlink radically simple portable computer, you know, uh, which was intended to bring revolution in the developing world. Have you heard of Simputer now? Has it brought the revolution? No. Because what happens is that there is what is called as a talent, technology, and trust. And that trust in an innovation like this is shown by government becoming the first buyer. So supposing these 10,000 of these computers were brought, you know, uh, the, this team would have got uh, started. You would have got a market feedback. You created, uh, must have created uh, a new uh, a sort of product which would be ahead of uh, this world, like Bruce Sterling basically said, we lost that opportunity. Then, of course, uh, uh, later on, you must have heard about Akash, you know, $35. Can you imagine it was mass manufactured, basically. Uh, today, why $35 it should be available in $10, which poor people could have uh, sort of afforded. And that, why it bothers me that I saw the newspaper report on the other day when 15-year-old um, girls, boys have committed suicide because they don't have smartphones, you know. Pathetic. There is one Kuldeep Kumar in Himachal Pradesh who sold his only cow for 6,000 rupees to buy. Why? We had all these technologies and therefore we require, when we say Startup India, uh, etc. We have to ensure that they are backed up. There is what is called a talent, technology and trust. Some other there is a society. When I talk about um, the, not just reimagine, reinvent ourselves, that trust in our uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, products we have to uh, sort of uh, believe in. I'll give you an example, you know, uh, just to uh, show what societal mindset has to change in the reinvented India. One of the 10 uh, uh, Inclusive Innovation Awardees of uh, Anjani Mashilkar Award was uh, Naveen Khanna. What did he do? I hope none of you have had dengue, but if you had dengue, you would have found that once uh, you submit your sample, it takes a couple of days, one or two days to get uh, uh, the returns, right? What you did is that within 15 minutes, you come to know whether you are infected and also at what stage you are, because you had a remarkable marker and cheap as possible, by the way. It was a technology and US patents and so on. It was a technology which nobody would work. Nobody would touch it, although it was superior. We were importing from South Korea, from uh, uh, Australia, and from US. And then suddenly a pandemic broke up. And all the kids started getting exhausted. And then we approached these three countries. Two of them said, no, we will take time. South Korea said, yes, we'll supply. They put it in a ship, you know? And they put it in a wrong ship, which went actually to Africa. So India, there were no uh, the, the singer all. So we had no option but to go for Naveen Khanna's technology. Okay? And today, from 0% market share, he is 78% market share. But supposing that uh, uh, ship had come here, he would be still 0%. So what I'm saying is that we have talent like Naveen Khanna, like the Simputer team. We have technology, like what I just now mentioned. We have to have trust. Trust in ourselves. You know? And that trust has to be built by giving them a chance. I chair this Maharashtra State Innovation Society. And for startups, we have changed the tendering process. Because you are always asking for experience, that and the other, etc. It is almost like, you know, Sachin Tendulkar, when he was 15 in Ranji Trophy, he scored a century. Right? But then somebody, the, you know, the body would say, but where is your 10-year experience before we put you into test? See, it cannot work. You have to give our young a chance. You have to trust them. If that happens, I think then we as a country are on. That's the only further message I want to give. 
because uh, you will have children, you will have young people around you. Please trust them. Please trust them. You know, uh, they will do us proud. I want to end by uh, giving, uh, because many people ask me, you know, uh, you are uh, uh, now uh, 78 and you have learned so much. So can you tell us five lessons from the book of your life? Uh, so these are my five mantras, by the way, Mashankar Mantra, and I will end with that. The first mantra is aspirations are your possibilities. Keep them high. Okay. I remember uh, when I became the director of NCL as one of the CSR labs, you know that 1989, I became the director. And at that time, what was the situation? This was two years before 1991. And we were all doing import substitution, reverse engineering, copying, to be honest. And we did well. I mean, for example, uh, the green devolution would not have taken place if uh, there were no agrochemicals. And 70% of the agrochemicals were created by CSR. So that was not bad. But I remember I said, uh, uh, because whenever we develop some technology which was ahead of the rest of the world, and I went to industry, they would say, but have they done it? There's no confidence. So I said, where am I selling? Where am I selling? Why should I be selling in India only my technologies? The whole world. And on the very first day, and the speech is there, by the way, on the NCL website, where I said, let national chemical laboratory by international chemical laboratory. OK? And we'll export our knowledge to the rest of the world. And for some reason, I talked about G, General Electric, you know? And I was I was reading something, and I said we should be able to license our patents to GE also, because I'm a polymer person. You know, I was seeing something, and you know something, it's uh, the uh, incredible. Somebody came to me, young fellow, and said, uh, 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 "Sir, do you realize their R&D budget is two and a half times India's R&D budget?" I said, "It's not the power of budget; it's the power of idea that matters." This I said in 1989. In 1991, three of our US patents, we licensed them for $3 million. In polycarbonates, where they had 40% market share, by the way. So we could license, our, our mind is such that we could create something which we could offer to uh, sort of uh, the best in the world, the leader in the world, as a matter of fact. We are capable of that. And same laboratory, which was doing reverse engineering copy. So that is because we raised our aspirations. We said we'll not be national chemical laboratory, we'll be international chemical. That's the first one. Secondly, perseverance pays. Too early to give up. Winners are never quit. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. So I always uh, tell everybody, fail, F-A-I-L. All right? It is first attempt in learning. First attempt in learning. Your best guru is your last mistake, as long as you are able to learn from. That is second muscle demo. And I have used it in my life. Third, I told you about hard work. You know, no substitute uh, uh, to hard work. Like instant coffee, there is no instant success. But the only thing I uh, tell my young friends is that work hard in silence. Let success make all the noise. You know, my fourth muscle mantra is don't keep on knocking on the door of opportunity. If they don't open, create your own doors. Once again, I'll give you my personal example. When I came back in 1976, I was trained in rheology, as was mentioned, right? I wanted to buy a Weizenberg Rheogonia meter, model R18. I still remember the model number. It would take two years to get it. Digital clearance, not manufactured in India, certificate. Can you just imagine? Then that door was not opening. So what did I do? I said, I will go into modeling and simulation, where I use only this. I'm not importing anything from anywhere. I have it already. And can you imagine I started the work in 77, and Bhatnagar work is given for five years of work. In 82, I got the Bhatnagar. Now, had I kept like this and uh, waiting for that door to open, what would happen? I created my own door. So that is my fourth lesson. And the fifth lesson, the final one, is uh, no limit, uh, as, as was uh, shown uh, in, in, on my website, no limit to human imagination, no limit to human endurance, no limit to human uh, a, a achievement. And we have seen that, like no uh, limit to human endurance. You saw that uh, young girl 
you know, who drove her father on a bicycle, injured father on a bicycle uh, for uh, Jyoti Paswan, uh, you know, uh, from Himachal Pradesh to Bihar, 1200 kilometers in uh, eight days. It's incredible. So no limit to human endurance. So I end by telling you a story. You know, I became FRS, Fellow of Royal Society. As was mentioned, there are only three engineering scientists from uh, in 360 years who have become. So I was very happy. And Professor C.N.R. Rao is my guru. You know, our Bharatatna Professor C.N.R. Rao, guru, guide, friend, philosopher, everything he has been. Whatever I am is because of these gurus that uh, are there, including my mother and Professor Sharma and others. So I phoned him up. I thought he will say great and so on and so forth. Nothing. He said, not bad. I was very disappointed. Then I became uh, American um, Academy of uh, uh, Arts and Science, you know, and uh, this was 1780 onwards. And Benjamin Franklin and George uh, Washington had created it. There are 200 Nobel laureates and people from Charles Darwin to Winston Churchill and uh, holding up. And only seven Indians have become so far. So I was the seventh. So I called Professor Sina. I thought he would say great. He said, not bad. I was very disappointed. Then, at least here, there were third and seventh. The National Academy of Inventors, US, by the way. I was the first Indian to become one. So I thought, now he will say great. I called him. Again, his answer was, not bad. Then I got upset. I said, sir, what do I have to do to impress you? What he told then, what he said then, is going to be my last slide. What he said is that he calls me my first name, Ramesh. Uh, my name is Raghunath Mashelkar, but people who are close to me call me Ramesh. He says, Ramesh, you are climbing on a ladder of excellence, which has no limit, excepting the limit you put on yourself. See what a great message it is. What it tells you is that your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. So my message uh, 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 today, uh, slightly different from the one uh, uh, Professor Ananda Krishnan, uh, uh, Ram Krishnan that you remember, is the following. No matter what happens, we have to say, my best is yet to come. So whether you are in your 20s or 30s or 40s, or like I'm 78, doesn't matter. When you get up in the morning, you should say, my best is yet to come. And maybe today is the day where it will come. So supposing you are 89 and that's the last day of your life, it doesn't matter. That day, you have to say that. And if a billion Indians do that every day, my best is yet to come. And not for myself, but for my country. What a great nation it will be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much you. Sir, for your wonderful, energetic and inspiring speech. IAFPT is filled with the Mashilkar Mandras and the profound ideas of a great legend today. And the way you explain the transformation of that post-COVID in India by that five mandras, by make buy to make better and make to buy better and the integration of all these. It's really wonderful, sir. And you have triggered our patriotism and kindled our spirit uh, to uh, invent more using these innovations, how we can help the poor people. And also, uh, thank you so much for throwing light and helping us uh, to reimagine and reinvent post-COVID India and to help us to understand uh, the strong role which we need to play uh, during this uh, post-COVID uh, India. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. S. Shanmugasundaram, Associate Professor and Head, Planning and Monitoring Cell, to deliver the vote of thanks. As respected chief guest, director IAPT, and all the dignitaries, those who are watching through virtually, faculties, staff, and my dear students, 
it is my privilege honor to propose vote of thanks on this uh, auspicious occasion i have the pleasant duty to thank uh, dr r a masilkar national research professor former dg csar and secretary uh, dsir our today guest for gracing today beautiful function and delivering the lecture on reimagining and reinventing post covid india thank you very much sir for your very interesting and uh, thought provoking address sir also on behalf of iapt family my heartfelt thanks to all the dignitaries and distinguished guests those who are watching virtually this event my very sincere thanks to our director sir for his constant support and guidance to organize this environment lecture in grand manner on behalf of iapt my hearty congratulation to dr v subramaniam iapt best scientist technical staff and support uh, supporting staff award winners dr r magendran dr parandaman shrimati jayalakshmi also i would like to thank entire iapt family including hod's faculty staff and my dear students for the stable support for successful conduct of this event thank you very much jai hind thank you dr shanmuga sundaram and mashilkar sir your esteemed presence on this remarkable day will be remembered in the history of iafpt and will be cherishing it forever thank you all for gracing this occasion with your august presence and special thanks to all the virtual participants for witnessing this grand day thank you one and all